It's all right. He's going to be talking about the digital playbook for manufacturing. So all that and more coming from the director and manufacturing industry advisor from Salesforce India. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Mr. Rajkumar Ravuri. Give it up to welcome him. Good round of cheer, everybody. Hi, Mr. Rajkumar. Over to you. Thank Looking you. forward to be hearing from you. Can you all hear me OK? Is that right? All right, great. I think we've had some fascinating uh, sessions this afternoon, um, and amazing panels on various topics. So clearly, uh, it's an opportunity to engage. I think some folks have just stepped out for a quick break. Uh, but let's get going. Uh, clearly, I think uh, we are in a new world. This new world is characterized by hyper-connectivity with uh, millions of 5G-enabled devices and our ever-increasing demand for anything and everything in real time. And that's putting enormous pressure on organizations across sectors, including manufacturing, to meet those ever-changing needs of their customers to serve anything and everything in real time. So clearly, this is the mindset that manufacturers have to grapple with amidst a changing scenario, the macroeconomic environment, and all of the disruptions. My name is Rajkumar Ravuri, and uh, as uh, I was introduced earlier, I'm part of our manufacturing industry advisory team, and I consult with all of our leading manufacturing customers. I've spent more than 20 years focused on the industry. So clearly, I think when we talk about uh, the new world, all of us are familiar with the hyperconnectivity. You know, you can download a brand new Netflix movie in less than 30 seconds before you get on a flight, or you're uh, wanting to order something uh, since your wife or someone at home wants some quick groceries. So you have the options to move across from Dunzo. And if Dunzo can't deliver in 15 minutes, I go to you know, Blinkit. Or Blinkit can't meet it, and you go to Big Basket. So we're living in this new world where clearly, if you see, the world is moving extremely fast. Just taking a snapshot back, 20 years ago, there were about 150 million personal computers. But fast forward to today, there are close to 15 billion smartphones. It's almost twice the size of the global population. And if you look at all of the devices across the globe, about 125 billion devices is what IDC, the analyst firm, claims. And what does this mean for all of us? So clearly, we're in an age where there's an ever-increasing um, you know, opportunity to not only connect with each other across the world, irrespective of locations, but also we're producing massive amounts of data than ever before. So this all puts enormous opportunity for organizations, at the same time pressure to not only make sense all of this data, but also about the experiences and the expectations that end customers like you and me, whether we're in the B2C space or B2B, and we engage with brands, be it in manufacturing or elsewhere, is extremely important. And that sets the tone for me in terms of how we look at the challenges that those in the CXO board, be it in the chief digital officer role or the chief information officer role, uh, what sort of a playbook they need to look at to help deliver success for all of those initiatives on time with a proper executive governance framework that they can manage with. So when we look at the manufacturing industry itself, especially over the last 18 to 24 months, I'm sure there's lots uh, that's top of mind for you. So clearly the supply chain challenges, um, even here in India, uh, we've faced that, uh, where you're unable to produce enough products and get them into the hands of your dealer distributors, eventually selling to end customers. And those of us who wanted to book the latest model, be it an SUV or a luxury vehicle, I'm sure you witnessed, just as I was a few months ago, and I was uh, told I had a 9 to 12 month wait time. So clearly the inventory shortages that the automotive industry is grappling with, whether we will ever see back to the good old days where the inventory is predictable and of a 30 to 45 days sort of a inventory, right? The third is clearly the inflation. The rising commodity prices is increasing the cost of business. And whether organizations in manufacturing, we've been hearing announcements that you can really pass on those costs to your customers, or whether customers change their buying behavior and they clamp down on their purchasing, right? At the same time, with aging workforce in the manufacturing industry, organizations are fighting for hiring the next generation talent, bring them on board, but also it's about what sort of techniques they deploy to retain the talent that's aging and leaving the organization, 
with the right set of uh, mix of reskilling and upskilling capabilities. And finally, with the ever increasing mandate on the environmental, social, and the governance, the ESG mandates, the decisions that organizations are faced with and the boardroom decisions, it's not just internally that you control. I think the first panel uh, right after we kicked off this afternoon on the net zero, it's about not just the scope one and scope two, but scope three, which is really outside of your control. And manufacturing as an industry has a vast global footprint, and it's an important area for us to focus on. So clearly, as we've heard, this is massive in terms of the expectations that those of you who are in the CIO, the CDO role, or even the chief operations officer role, right? How do you determine what is the role, what is the right role of digital, and what sort of investments can you seek for in terms of funding, and how do you measure the success as you roll out your initiatives? We at Salesforce have been working for the better part of the last two decades with the global manufacturing organizations across sectors, be it automotive OEMs, large and small, including the new age EV companies, or the machinery and the heavy equipment manufacturers, to building materials companies, as well as chemicals and appliances, high tech, aerospace, you name it. What we've seen is increasingly companies are trying to do a balancing act. They have their vision set for the next five to 10 years, but within this age of uncertainty and the chaos that you don't really control, you can only control so much. So with the ever-changing needs of the end customers and the blurring lines between those of us who play the B2C role when we buy something online on Flipkart or Amazon, but also when we play the B2B employee role or the various functions that we play, the lines are getting blurred. Organizations are looking at digital investments across these five pillars. So I'll just take a couple of minutes to help you relate to many of the initiatives we heard from the panelists uh, this afternoon. First and foremost, they are deploying new age digital experiences for not just their internal workforce across functions to drive greater efficiencies and productivity, but also meeting the ever increasing needs across their ecosystem. Their direct customers who could be dealer distributors, but also the end customers themselves. And they're benchmarking these experiences with the best in class, not just in their, their industry, but also across industries, and also against the new age startups. That's the first. And why are they doing this? They're wanting to eliminate friction in every touch point and every interaction across this omni-channel, uh, digital sort of a world that we're witnessing. The second area is organizations are bringing back massive amounts of data, and they're trying to make sense of all of this data, and then especially build that data-driven culture and have intelligent decision making so that they increase the business agility but also apply the right sort of techniques which are AI driven and machine learning driven. So that in the moment uh, employee or one of your partner stakeholder is engaged with their customers, how does AI combined with that intelligent data leads you to more productive decision making and improving the agility of the entire organization, including your ecosystem. That leads me to the third pillar, which is the foremost and a lot of innovation is happening. Historically, manufacturing companies, whether you are producing hard, discrete products that you can touch and feel, or those in the process manufacturing industry, they were very product-centric, focused around operations, internally driven efficiencies, and uh, focused on the R&D, procurement, manufacturing, supply chain, and distribution. It was all about building scale, keeping the cost down, and all of that. But with the ever-changing needs for the end customers, those forward-thinking manufacturers from our uh, research and work, we're seeing they're rapidly shifting from a product-centric, internally-driven mindset into a customer-centric mindset. And uh, you know, mind you, the customer-centric mindset is not just for the immediate customers that you serve, but also the end customers. And how do you work backwards uh, inside the organization? And from all of the data-driven intelligence that you're building, whether it leads you to not only redefine new market spaces, acquire those as well as potentially look at venturing into new areas and possibly even new business models. And what we're seeing in automotive and others, usage-based, subscription-driven uh, business models. The fourth area is the talent part. And I think this is a challenge we've seen uh, with the big uh, you know, era of uh, uh, you know, uh, resignations and uh, talent moving across organizations in the last 18 to 24 months. Manufacturing is one critical industry as India is embarking on the G20 presidency as of today. Congratulations to uh, Prime Minister and the entire country. But I think clearly 
the bigger mandate that we have, be it on the net zero and the sustainability, or driving forward innovation as a leading pioneer of the next generation inclusive solutions, catering not just to the tier one urban markets, but also all the way to the last mile. So there's a lot focused around where do you tap the talent, and in the post-pandemic realization, location is no longer a constraint. So how do you hire the talent, focus on the reskilling and upskilling with the digital platform that can build the scale for these manufacturers? And lastly, the whole ESG leadership. So we've had the discussion around the net zero. What sort of a framework combined with the digital tool set to not only capture the data, whether it is in a you know, manual form or automated form, but also more increasingly embrace the vast ecosystem and the stakeholders so that you can make the measures you know, uh, reported and build a transparency and ultimately track towards a path towards net zero. So we at Salesforce have been building on a playbook where we're continuously enhancing. This has proven successful for us to help our customer organizations across manufacturing and many other industries to rely on this to enable success for organizations. And clearly this is not just the traditional organizations and not just the large, but also small and new age companies as well. The three core tenets to the digital playbook. The first is about the four customer centric disciplines. I'll just quickly get to that. And second is what is the digital execution framework and how do you lead with that? And third is the platform that we bring to the manufacturing industry. How does it foster growth, a continuous sustainable growth, but also a path of continuous innovation? So let's take a quick look at all the three tenets. The customer centric disciplines from our research as the leading customer centric success platform in the organization, uh, the four. The first is the customer centric business processes is no matter whether you're in the B2B industry or the B2C, how do you cater to those processes and move from that process and the product centric into the customer centric mindset. The second is how do you define work, especially in this new age hybrid working model, you know, eliminate those silos and no matter whether you're working in the hybrid model or back to work uh, in the physical office, you know, bringing the entire power of the organization for the sake of serving the end customer and as well as all of the channels and the ecosystem that are here for serving the end customer. So how do you bring all that together about the one team aligned around the end customer? The third is when you're bringing all this information back, what sort of capabilities and the sentience that you build in the organization to sense, anticipate and change because the changing needs of customers will be there forever and keeping pace with that and able to respond fast in a competitive marketplace, how do you drive that intelligence decision making? And lastly, you need the right sort of a digital framework and the platform. It needs to be digital first, so everything think from digital. And second, it has to have the leanest technology stack so that you don't focus of 80% of your IT spend on keeping the operations on, but instead focus all of that towards building innovation. So taking a look at the execution framework again, uh, these are the five principles that we lead. Uh, clearly, CIOs are having to manage not only deliver growth, but also new innovations for new opportunities and new market spaces. So clearly, these are the five areas. I don't want to read through all of that, but I think business and IT alignment, we've heard from the executive from Bira as a clear example, which is uh, prime most uh, for organizations grappling with how to measure the success for the digital investments. The second area is about, you know, focused on, you know, clearly what sort of architecture and technology that is lean to deliver, not only for here and now, but build the scale for fast growth. And third is the skills and the talent and the change management processes that you can bring into the organization. And the fourth area is where clearly what sort of metrics that you have in terms of measuring the success. And lastly, you need a financial framework. Uh, to go on the days of the legacy, you know, on-premise sort of investments. You need to start small, but fail fast and move really fast at the pace of the, you know, market pace, and as well as ability to innovate across the new areas of opportunity. So these are all the areas that we believe, which is the framework from a digital playbook. And lastly, the manufacturing platform that Salesforce delivers to our manufacturing customers is the number one uh, platform to drive growth. And uh, while it's a busy slide, I'll just take uh, 60 seconds to kind of lay it out for you. First and foremost, it's a scalable, flexible platform. No matter what side of company you are, what sectors that you serve across discrete or process, ability to take the pre-built industry components and solutions and the work processes, you can then tailor-made to suit to your own requirements, to your own customer changing demands, 
and able to bring the entire ecosystem, not just your internal organization, but also your dealer, distributors, suppliers, and the extended ecosystem and deliver to their demands. And finally, it is also about not just having an on the cloud solution, but it's a mix of having out of the box solution to deliver faster time to life, but also have the flexibility in house to drive those innovation projects and leverage what's best in class, but also make it uniquely differentiating for your organization to build that IP and competitive differentiation. So that's quickly the three tenets of the digital playbook. And we've been helping leading manufacturing organizations to leverage this and deliver success. Thanks again.